Hi, this is Tucker, and this is vocab list number three. Please make sure you're taking Cornell notes of these words and the definitions, and take note of any of the examples I pull out and share with you that you think might be helpful in remembering these words. Underline any uh, roots or you know any little clues that might help you remember the, the meanings of these words. So the first word is abduction. An abduction is a noun. The verb form of the word is to abduct. But abduction is the actual act of carrying away a person against his or her will to carry away or to take illegally. So a lot of times you'll hear about abductions of small children um, and who have been taken from their homes or a park by somebody against their will. Two is altruism. And altruism is also a noun. And it means benevolence. Benevolence is goodness, generosity, kindness to others on subordination of self-interest. So when you are kind and generous to others, and in doing so, you have to put your own interests kind of be behind theirs, or you have to um, push your own interest down. Uh, to do something for somebody else, to be kind to somebody else, that is altruism. So usually someone who is altruistic, and that's the describing word, that's the adjective, so someone who demonstrates altruism is altruistic, usually that person is sacrificing something in their generosity or to be kind or they are putting their own interests kind of aside in order to do something nice for somebody else. Um, so if, you know, let's say I'm just an average person, I win the lottery, and I decide I'm going to give all of that money, every bit of it, to charity, even though some of it would probably help me, that, that would be an act of altruism, right? Because it's, it's kindness, it's generosity to others when I could have benefited from it, but I'm not. Three is bravado. And to have bravado or to demonstrate bravado is it's an, it's an aggressive display of boldness. So maybe the, the B in bravado, let's see if I can underline it, the B in bravado and the B in boldness will just help you kind of remember these two words. And even the word bravado, it sounds like a big, bold word. Um, and usually when I think of bravado, I think of like, a big, you know, like a cowboy or a real man's man who kind of enters the room um, very, like, aggressively or very boldly and commands the attention of everyone. So that might be a good, good example to help you remember. Exacerbate is a verb, and to exacerbate is to make more sharp, more severe, more virulent. And I cannot think of this word without thinking of my daughter, um, who is very similar to me. And oftentimes when we are having a conflict of some kind, um, and I'm asking her, you know, just be quiet, just, just hear me, listen to me. And she will continue to talk and continue to talk over me and try to insist on her point of view. It exacerbates the situation. It makes me more angry. It makes me more frustrated. Um, so a lot of, you know, kids, when they talk back to their parents or they disagree with their parents, and if their parents are already frustrated or upset, that exacerbates the situation. It makes it worse. It makes it more sharp, more severe. Really makes it worse is probably a really good, a really good definition or alternative definition. Five is fallacy. And a fallacy is a noun. It's unsound judgment or an unsound mode of reasoning or thinking. Remember the last list. We talked about delusions and being delusional. Someone who has an unsound approach to reasoning um, or a delusive mode of reasoning, um, it, they're very similar words. So delusion and fallacy. Fallacy is the belief in something that is not real. Um, it is unsound reasoning. And delusion is to have a conviction that is incorrect. So very similar words. Six is inconceivable. And I can't, I can't hear this word without thinking of the princess bride, in which uh, one of the characters says, 
something is inconceivable over and over again. And remember, here's another word where we're starting with the I-N, and it means not conceivable. So it's one of those prefixes, I-N, meaning not, so not conceivable. And if you can conceive of something, you can imagine it happening. If something is inconceivable, it is beyond comprehension. It is beyond our ability to imagine that this could happen. Um, you know, so for me, uh, the idea of seeing, you know, a spaceship, like a, a alien spaceship flying into my hometown, it's inconceivable. I cannot comprehend what that would be like. Um, so something that is in, uh, inconceivable is incomprehensible. Seven, great little word, it's irk. And to irk someone is to just kind of, you know, upset them to, it says to afflict with pain, vexation, or fatigue. But when you do something that gets under somebody else's skin, you are irking them. So for me, I have many little pet peeves and pen clicking is one of them. And it irks me. It just gets under my skin and makes me crazy. The next word is monotonous. Remember we talked about in the last word, I believe it was monologue. It also started with this M-O-N-O, -O, mono, meaning one. So monotonous, and if you think of like tone, like your tone of voice or the tone of music, um, monotonous, mono, one, tone. So it is an unchanging, tedious sound. So something that is monotonous is the same, it doesn't change, and it's tedious. It's, this, it's negative. It, it, gets, it probably irks you, right, when you hear a monotonous sound. So again, if someone is just click, 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 that's fairly monotonous. We've all had teachers or we've all listened to people speak who have voice that doesn't really change. The way they talk always stays the same. That's monotonous, right? There's no, there's no flavor in their voice. They don't really change their intonations. Number nine is pastoral, and something that is described as pastoral, sometimes a painting is pastoral, or a, a story is pastoral, and it means that it has the spirit or the sentiment of rural life, and rural life is like out in the country. Think about sheep and rolling green hills. That's what we're talking about when we talk about pastoral, or we describe something as pastoral. Re- is a root word. So recoil means re usually means again. So to coil again. So someone who recoils, and this is a verb, starts back, meaning kind of jumps back or makes a movement back in dismay. So out of kind of like shock, out of loathing, so hatred for something, out of dread. So if I'm, you know, hiking up in Annadale with my friends and all of a sudden I see a snake in the middle of the road, I might recoil, meaning I would jump back out of fear or out of, you know, hate for snakes or whatever. Um, but it's that movement, recoil, to jump back, to start, to physically, like, start because you're dismayed, you, you're loathing something, you dread something, you're afraid of something. Sagacious describes someone who is able to discern and distinguish with wise perception. And here's the word we want to remember, wise. So someone who is sagacious is wise. That's all you need to know. They're able to look at a situation and really distinguish the, the truth of what's happening because they are wise. Subjugate, sub, again, this is a root word and it means below. So to subjugate someone or a group of people means to conquer. And when you conquer a group of people or a person, you push them beneath you in terms of their power. So it's to subjugate is to conquer. Thirteen is tranquil. Something that is described as tranquil is very calm, tends to be kind of relaxing. So if you're laying by a river and you hear the sound of the river kind of going by, it's calm like a babbling brook, that might be described as a very tranquil scene, a very tranquil moment. Um, some people find that the ocean is very tranquil, that the, the waves are kind of have this um, this hypnotic kind of effect on you. So it's very calm, relaxing. 14 is vicarious. 
and it describes a situation that is suffered or done in the place of or for the sake of another. And this is a hard definition. I don't think it makes the most sense. When you're not able to do something, you can live through somebody else's experience. And when you do that, you can live vicariously, which is the adverb form of this word. We are adding the L-Y to the end, making it an adverb, describes how something is done, living vicariously through their experience. So imagine all of your friends are going to prom. They're so excited. They talk about it all the time. You are grounded. You're not going to be going to the prom. Well, you might want to hear about their experience so you can live vicariously through them. So you can feel like you had the experience of going to prom even though you weren't there. Number 15 is capricious. And someone who is described as capricious is subject to or led by unpredictable changes or whims. So someone who is capricious is unpredictable, right? They have a tendency, they, they tend to be spontaneous and they act very quickly. So they tend to change course very quickly. They they will act on a whim, which means they haven't given it very much thought, but they're going to do it anyway. So think about someone as being who is capricious as being whimsical, unpredictable, and spontaneous. 